Welcome to Time Warner Cable Field at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute, Wisconsin. Time for our second Division II state semifinal at the WIA State Baseball Tournament as the Ellsworth Panthers face the Racine St. Catharines Angels. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being with us and staying up late. Just past 10 o'clock here in Grand Chute. Bill Brophy, Jay Wilson with you and our entire When We Were Young Productions crew. And Growth, the only two teams you haven't seen yet in this state tournament. You've seen every game, every pitch so far. It's going to be Ellsworth against Racine St. Catharines. Racine St. Catharines, the number one ranked team of the state. 25 wins and one loss. Ellsworth's first ever trip to state. We'll yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to seeing Racine St. Catharines. Heard a lot about them. And again, that they've been pretty good all year. 25 and one. They've, they uh, like Sun Prairie in Division One and Greenwood in Division Four. Come in here as the 
the favor in their division. Sun Prairie held up their end of the, the bargain by getting to the finals. Greenwood, not so much. But uh, you know, we're seeing St. Castro. they got some talented players. Der- Derek Keffel pitched tonight 6-0. and Just a sophomore, Shea Smith, A.J. Caprillion. they got some good athletes. All right, here's the Ellsworth batting order. The Panthers will be the visiting team, and they'll be up first. Brandon Volker, the catcher, leads off. Dennis Schutz is the center fielder, hitting second. Brady Schroeder, the right fielder, hits third. Jake Bedhauser, shortstop, fourth. Tyler Marson, the first baseman, hits fifth. James Georgicus is the pitcher tonight. He'll hit sixth for Ellsworth. Mitch Matter, the third baseman, hits seventh. Chandler Flynn at second base, hits eighth. Dan Giese will be the designated hitter. He'll hit ninth. Travis Kroll will play the field, but not bad. He'll be in left field for Ellsworth. And they will face right-handed pitcher Derek Heffel for Racine St. Catherine. Derek, a lanky right-hander, 6'4", 195 pounds. He's had a big sophomore year. 6-0 with the 104 and run averages is his ninth game. His ace start, he's got five complete games and three shutouts in 47 and third innings. He's allowed 27 hits, just seven earned runs. Walked seven and struck out 69. And here's the first pitch from Heffel, and it is a strike called to Brandon Volker. Kerry well, Timler, the head coach of Racine St. Catherine, says... As a sophomore, Derek Heffel, the pitcher, doesn't get phased by anything. Well, he's on the biggest stage in high school baseball in Wisconsin right now. And that one's in the air to left. And it's going to be taken by the shortstop, Shea Smith, in shallow left field. And one up, one down for Ellsworth in the first. Well, you heard Shea Smith's a pretty good athlete. And he showed it right there, going back on the ball in the junior. Makes the catch to retire the first hitter of the night. And there you see it. Uh, Smith really went into the outfield grass to get that one. One up, one down. Here's Dennis Schutz, who's the center fielder for Ellsworth, hitting second in the order for head coach Steve Block. And a swinging strike for Schutz. Ellsworth comes in with some impressive offensive stats. They hit 379 collectively of five home runs. They've also can, shown they can run. They got 54 stolen bases. This looks like a pretty well-balanced offense. Strike call from Heffel, and it's now 0-2 to Schutz. He's a 360 hitter. Four doubles, five triples, and 17 RBIs. Both of these teams making their first trip to state in WIAA play. Racine St. Catharines had great success in WISA through the years. They won six WISA state baseball titles, 1968, 1971, 72, 73. And then again in 1975 and 76, but again their first trip to state. And you got to be old to remember Wissa. Oh boy, no That's kid. A private school organization. Which, how long's the merger been now? Walked out. Wow, I say 19. Oh no, 99, 99. Yeah, right around the turn of the century. 13, I guess. Yeah, 13 say, yeah. years ago. I'm yeah, saying it. Right. Almost a, a lot of young people never heard of Wissa. Yeah. I mean, thank you, young people, for watching us on the computers right. tonight because we would have never believed you could watch stuff on, the, on your computer 13 years ago. Never heard a whistle? <laughs> I lived it at <laughs> Wisconsin Rapids Assumption. Well. You know what happened? We uh, At Assumption, we'd, we used to, there's a four-team sectional. You win two games. You beat Columbus and Nassau Newman or Pacelli. You go to state and you went down. You played Racine St. Catharines in the first game at the Gold Mecca, and you got pounded. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Jones, Jim Jones, and guys like that for Racine St. Catharines didn't work out well. That was life as a Wisconsin Rapids assumption yeah. athlete. Huh? Don't remind me. One and two, the count. Strike three, but the ball gets away from the catcher Caprellian, and shoots is going to reach. So that'll be a strikeout for Heffel, but shoots makes it to first. Boy, that thing really hopped off the shin guards of the catcher, Caprellian. Yes, it did. Had some movement on the ball, too. So first base runner of our Division II semifinal game. Man, I think we're going to go over and check on the catcher here. Yeah. Huh? I, I don't know if the shin guard broke. I when think it, it might be the, an equipment issue, yeah. yeah. Steve Block is 
eighth season at Ellsworth, 22 seasons overall. There you see Caprellian back now. Looks like uh, he's all strapped up and looking good with that shin guard. Roll it. Steve Block in 22 seasons, 323 wins, 118 losses. That puts him at the top 15 all time, both in wins and winning percentage. Ellsworth 19 and five this season, as we said, Racine St. Catharines 25 and one. Throw to first, Chase's shoots back. Brady Schroeder is the hitter now for Ellsworth. And he's a good hitter. 353 average. Homer 14 RBIs. He's going to play Division II in Ona State next year. Throw gets away from the first baseman Ortiz, and that'll get shoots to second. So Ellsworth trying to get off to a good start. That'll be an error on the pitcher, Heffel. Caprillion to the mound to try to settle his sophomore down. And he should be unnerved. He had a strikeout. Wild pitch allows him to. Wow, sh shoots to get the first, and then an Aaron pickoff throw. All of a sudden, they got a runner in scoring position, and Heffel deserves better. Here's the first pitch to Schroeder, and he hits it hard to left, but it'll hold up for Lucas Cunnerton, who makes the catch, and that's out number two. Throw gets past the cutoff man, but backed up by the pitcher, Heffel. So two out. And here's Jake Bedhauser, the Ellsworth shortstop. You see those brilliant purple uniforms for the Panthers, with the white pants. Regal, don't you think? I yeah. would say Regal. I think that's accurate. Come on, Jake. And St. Catharines going with the muted gray uniforms with the black and gold trim. First pitch to Bedhauser is a strike. Ellsworth, second place in the Middle Border Conference, 11-3 record. Prescott won the conference title, 14-0. And Prescott in the Division Three field, and they will play for the state championship tomorrow against Parkview. So the Middle Border well represented here at the state tournament. That shoots the runner at second. 0-1 to Bethauser. 0-2. Jake's the leading hitter on this club, hitting 492 with seven doubles, two triples, two home runs among his 31 hits. He's knocked in 25. All our team highs. Multi-sports star for Ellsworth. Bedhauser, first-team all-conference infielder in baseball, also a second-team all-conference inside linebacker in football. And he looks at a ball one and two now from Derek Heffel. Yeah, so if you're a sophomore, that puts you in the, what, 14, 15, 16-year-old category? Probably 15 or 16? Yeah. How about that? Here you are starting in the state tournament. <laughs> See the fake by Schutz as he tried to distract Heffel, the pitcher, and now two and two of the count to the hitter, Bedhauser. Those are regal-looking uniforms. Like the piping, that's good look. 2-2. Yeah, they went after the high one and fouled it straight back. Wind still blowing as it has for most of the evening. Pretty strongly, about 15 miles an hour, 15 to 20. Going from the right field corner to the left field corner. So if a right-handed batter hooks it, he'll get a little help. This one's fouled back again, 2-2. Two and two. When we saw it. Factor into the previous Division II semifinals. Took a wind blown fly ball and turned it into a double early in that game. And the winds have not subsided, that's for sure. Yeah. Come on, Come on. We'll try the 2 2 again to Bedhauser. Well, that pitch is in the same place. And again, he popped it up. Let's see if Caprellian has enough room to get it. What a catch! Boy, the wind pushed it away from him, and Caprellian makes a diving, rolling catch. Wow, what a play. We've seen a couple good plays by catchers tonight in the D2 semifinals. First by Jordahl of Portage, and right here by Caprellian. Well, hangs with him and makes the diving catch 
on the warning track. Wow, that's a great way to end the inning, isn't it? Ellsworth gets a base runner on a third strike that got away from the catcher, but he's stranded at second base. So nothing doing for the Panthers on the scoreboard in the first. We go to the bottom of the first. We're seeing St. Catharines coming up. No score. Beautiful picture at Time Warner Cable Field at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute as we head to the bottom of the first inning. And we're seeing St. Catharines batting order coming up. Nathan Simons, the second baseman, hits first. Luke Cunnington, the left fielder, is second. A.J. Caprellians, the catcher, at third. Jay Smith, the cleanup hitter, the shortstop. Eric Weisbrod will hit fifth. He's the center fielder. Derek Heffel, the pitcher, hits sixth. Cody Ortiz, the first baseman, hitting seventh. Eric Idol, the third baseman, hitting eighth. And Nick Davidovic is the designated hitter hitting ninth. Alex McDonald playing right field, but not in the batting order. And there you see Ellsworth starting pitcher. His name is James Georgicus. And there's James's numbers. This is his ninth start. Actually, his 11th appearance, his ninth start. He's got seven complete games, three shutouts. And you can see in 46 and two thirds innings, he's got a nice Walk strikeout ratio. G E O R G A K A S. We are told that it's pronounced Georgicus. And the first pitch to Simons is fouled off down the right field line. It's 0 and 1. Georgicus is a junior, 5'10, 185 pounds. He struck out 10 in the 4 1 complete game win against West Salem in the sectional semifinals. He only gave up four hits and no walks. And the left hander. Fouls that one off. Left-handed pitcher, I should say, to the right-handed batter, Simons, and counts going two. St. Katz hits 355 collectively. Pretty athletic group, I'm told. They've got 40 doubles as a team, 12 triples, and five home runs. Not afraid to run, 86 stolen bases and 97 attempts. Georgia can bounce that one in there, one and two. Nathan Simons is second team all conference as a sophomore. We've seen St. Catharines in the Midwest Classic South Conference. They were 13 and one this year, the champions of the league. Their only loss all season was to Heritage Christian five to three on April 12th. Since then they have won 21 straight games. And they beat Heritage Christian 12 nothing in the preceding game. One tube coming, and oh, that's a high and outside one that skips off the glove of catcher Brandon Volker. Oh, Volker was standing up trying to get a high fastball. George just threw it away outside. Two and two now. Fouled off. And it stays two and two. Oh, and oh, it out of the hands. The ball's got to be caught. He could have <laughs> been a hero to that woman. <laughs> we'll try the two two again to Simon. Oh, beautiful breaking ball. Got it. First strikeout for Georgicus and. Luke Cunnerton, the left fielder for St. Catharines, now up. It's a junior laden team, and Cunnerton, one of those many juniors. In fact, there were only two seniors on the team. Yeah. Davidovic and McDonald, two seniors. Cunnerton, ground ball to second. Chandler Flynn has that one, two down. Well, Georgicus off to a good start on the mound for Ellsworth. Retired the first two batters. Now catcher A.J. Caprellian is the hitter. Coming off that fine defensive play, which ended the top half of the inning. 
How many times you see a guy makes a great defensive play and hits third? Well, I'm deduced about one every <laughs> nine times. Yeah. Bob Brenner and I conferred on that. Yeah, it's years of intense research yep. and you came up with that conclusion. Caprelli on a 425 hitter on the season. No homers, but he's driven in 17. Seen St. Catharines will run the bases, 86 steals and 97 attempts. First, they need to get somebody on. Now, it's been two up and two down for Georgicus for Ellsworth. And that big lollipop stays high for a ball, two and one. The outfield alignment for Ellsworth, left to right, Travis Kroll, Dennis Schutz, and Brady Schroeder. Infield third to first, Mitch Matter, Jake Bethauser, Chandler Flynn, and Tyler Marson. Ball off. Brandon Volker's the catcher, and James Georgicus is the Ellsworth pitcher. Some of the crowd still hanging with us. Temperature dropping into the Upper 50s now, still a comfortable evening, but certainly jacket weather. You had that wind, it could get a little little chilly. Trust me, that wind is chilly. I uh, was out between games, yeah. and we're lucky we're in the booth. Yeah, if you're coming in T-shirt, flip-flops, you're not. I think that's our night. camera crew affirming what I just said, if you're outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little brisk. 3-2 coming to Caprellian. And he went after the high one and struck out. So Georgica strikes out two of the three batters he faces, and down go the Angels, one, two, three. We played one inning in our Division II semifinal. Ellsworth, Racine St. Catharines, no score. Top of the second now, no score. Ellsworth and Racine St. Catharines. Here's James Georgicus. He had a couple strikeouts in the first inning. That was high heat. They get Caprelli in to end the first. Five, six, and seven in the order scheduled for Ellsworth. And here's Tyler Marson with a shot to right center. That's a base hit. 
McDonald will get it before it hits the warning track, and that is a long single for Tyler well, Marsden. because Marsden missed first base. Ah. And he shot the gap there, and I think Marsden was admiring his towering blast and was, missed first base. That was a beauty. <laughs> I don't know if we can pick it up, but, I mean, it's a well-hit ball, and as he made the turn, he missed the bag, and the coach called him back and suggested maybe he better hit the bag. By the time that happened, they quickly got the ball in. Now the bunt back to the mound. They'll go to second. That's out there as Marson is erased as Heffel decides to get the lead runner, and he does as Smith covers second. So Georgicus is sacrificed, not successful. He'll reach on a fielder's choice. Nice job by Heffel to field his position, though. Yeah. Georgicus. Let's say you should have made a better bunt, but nonetheless, credit the sophomore for making a good defensive play. And we will get a courtesy runner for the pitcher, Georgicus. Batter will be third baseman, Mitch Batter. The runner at first is Nick Toretto. He's a freshman, six feet 160, Nick Toretto, T-A-R-A-N-T-O. He's the runner for Georgicus. And the first pitch to Matter misses ball one. Mitch Matter, honorable mention all conference in baseball, also a cross country runner for Ellsworth. They'll chase Toronto back to first with a throw there from Heffel. Side of the hands, ball. 2 and all. Running a little behind schedule tonight. The uh, afternoon session went pretty long, so our 6 o'clock game started closer to 7.30. There's a dandy from Heffel. Strike is called, 2 and 1. Mitch Matter hitting 439 of the season for Ellsworth. We rarely get the Wednesday night game in the state tournament it'd be before the 10 o'clock news, Jay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've, we've usually had a rain delay, it seems. Not today. Not now, but not today. Perfect weather, just long games. Well, weather forecasts say maybe some rain after midnight tomorrow night, but we'll be long gone by then, as Ernie Harlow used to say. And now three and two, the count of the batter matter. Toronto, the runner at first. He'll take about a two-step lead. And Heffel's 3-2 is up high, but fouled back. Earlier today, Coleman beat Pittsville 10-3. That was like an eight this Much morning. Much earlier today, yeah. And then Johnson Creek beat Greenwood 8-5. Greenwood previously unbeaten in the number one team in the state. So Coleman will play Johnson Creek tomorrow at 9 a.m to start off championship Thursday. Ball four outside. Two on, one out for Ellsworth. Nice job of, by Matter to work the count and get the walk. In division three earlier today, had a no hitter. Parkview beat St. Mary Central two nothing. As Jam Jamison Lafferty Struck out the last, or struck out 10 and retired the last 17 in a row and throwing the first no-hitter in seven years, only the fourth ever in Division Three, was his third no-hitter of the year. Yep. That's right. Chandler Flynn's the second baseman out there. So Parkview wins 2-0 over St. Mary Central. And that game was followed up by Prescott outslugging Oshkosh Lourdes Valley Christian 16-7. That's right. So it's Parkview and Prescott tomorrow at noon in the Division Three championship game. And then earlier tonight, Portage. Got mild upset, beats Fox Valley Lutheran 7-2 before a big crowd. Fox Valley Lutheran, a big support here in, in Appleton. And, but Portage silenced the crowd and gets into the finals at three tomorrow against the winner of this game. That one's high and one and two is the count to the hitter, Chandler Flynn. 
And then to wrap up Championship Thursday, the Division One final will feature Sun Prairie, once beaten Sun Prairie, the number one team in the state against Bayport. Ball two. That's going to be a game. That's those. Those are two of the premier programs for baseball in the state of Wisconsin. Yep. So we invite you to join us tomorrow starting at 9 o'clock on BoxSportsWisconsin.com. And there's also the state soccer tournament tomorrow oh. in Milwaukee. Yeah. And the state softball tournament in Madison. They all start tomorrow and run through Saturday. All right, going to be spread out all over the place next couple of days. Not me, buddy. I'm here with you. <laughs> oh, I can't. Wouldn't want it any other way. Strike three looking. Down goes Flynn. Second strikeout for Heffel. Jay and Bob Brennan are now bringing all the action tomorrow. Yeah. Baseball from nine to probably nine. That's going to be fun. Yeah, it will be nine to nine. Won't it? Yep, but some good matchups. It's okay. Always electricity around the park on championship Thursday. So two down now. Here's Dan Giese, the designated hitter, the number nine hitter in the Ellsworth lineup. And when you came to the park today, who would have thought you'd see a no-hitter followed by a 15 to 7 game that lasted three hours? No kidding. Geezy was a little late on that one. And it's but it was pretty cool here today, both during the no-hitter when yeah. the crowd got into it and then the preceding game, as we said, a big crowd. Tournament atmosphere, I thought, for Fox Valley Uther and Portage. Portage fans matched them. Yeah. Loud voice for loud voice, even though they were outnumbered. But it's been a fun day. Could have maybe speeded up a couple games, but. <laughs> well, you got ice cream, though. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yep. Oh, and two of the count to Geezy. Here it comes from Heffel. Just missed one and two. 325 feet down each line, left and right. Any bag, guys, any bag. Get the out. 385 to the power alley and left center. 405 to the power alley and right center. And that's another foul off the bat of Geezy. What a two remains the count. And the wind blowing rather briskly still from the right field corner to the left field corner here at Time Warner Cable Field at Fox City Stadium. Missed high, two and two. Temple was on the mound against University School, which was number one in Division Two for much of this season. Shut out U School, seven nothing, in the sectional semifinals. A two hit shutout that yeah. game. University School had a great year. They won the Midwest Classic North. They were 25 and three this season. But Heffel shut him down and helped get Racine St. Catharines to state. Three and two now the count to Giese. I think they had a couple of Division I recruits. Yeah. Ball four, they're loaded. Two out threat here for Ellsworth as we go to the top of the order and the catcher, Brandon Volker. So a single and two walks. Load the bases. And Volker with a chance to be a hero here in the second inning. Volker, the second team all-conference catcher in the middle border conference this year. He's a very successful wrestler for Ellsworth. And boy, I tell you, they can wrestle at Ellsworth as he follows off the first pitch. The Ellsworth wrestling team finished second to Luxembourg Casco in the state team wrestling tournament this year. Tell you what, if, uh, you know, Coleman's going in Division Four. We had a Coleman versus Ellsworth wrestling match. Oh man, we'd have something going on. You want to talk to Wade LeBecky about seeing if we can work that in? <laughs> can charge her state wrestling too. Any besides baseball? Hey, play a baseball game and then go wrestle. That'd be awesome. One and one, the count with the bases loaded to Volker. Hit in the air to left, but he didn't get all of it. And Connaughton will. Coming and make the catch, and Heffel is able to get out of the jam. Loaded the bases, but then the fly ball by Volker ends the inning. 
No runs for Ellsworth, top of second. We go to the bottom of number two at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute. No score, Ellsworth, Racine St. Catherine. There's a look at the Ellsworth dugout. The Panthers, the rest of the Panthers club out in the field for bottom of inning number two. St. St. Catherine's coming up with four, five, and six in the order. Shea Smith, Eric Weisbrod, and Derek Heffel, the scheduled three is. The Angels went down one, two, three in the first inning against James Georgicus. <laughs> Here's Smith. As a sophomore, he was first team all conference. He's also moved into the starting lineup for the boys basketball team ever seen St. Catherine. He's a darn good three point shooter. Mr. St. Catharines has certainly had their share of success in boys basketball in the years under Bob Lesh. Great coach. Kerry Timler is the baseball coach at Racine St. Catharines. His fourth season, 61 wins, 24 losses. Again, 25 and one this season. Here we go, eight. Let's go, Shea. That one's off the end of the bat. Let's see if it stays in play for Tyler Marson. Well, it, the wind helped push it back into the field of play, but it actually bounced off the warning track and out of play. So it's a foul ball, one and two, the count to Smith. Georgicus gets the sign, rocks and deals. And Smith again to the right side. That one's going to get out of play. He talked about Racine's long winning streak. Well, as they proceeded on that winning streak, the margins got narrow and narrower. Four of their last seven wins have been one run decisions. They came against some good competition. Bounce to third. Mitch Matter throws across the diamond. And Gets Smith, so four up, four down, four received St. Catharines. But they beat a good Wapan team to get here, four three. They're the little ten champs. Told you they beat U School seven nothing, but Edge Delavandarian five four in the preceding game and took two uh, extra inning wins from Kenosha St. Joe's five to four and four to three near the end of the regular season. Kenosha St. Joe's usually here, yeah. not this year though. Yeah, we usually see Catholic Central out of Burlington. They were eliminated, didn't get there, so no guarantees to get to state, no matter how good you are. Always a little, little luck, a lot of talent involved. This one's bounced up the middle. Going to be a tough play for Chandler Flynn. He bobbles, and Weisbrod will be Racine St. Catherine's first base runner. He quickly scored a hit. Yeah, just as you said, when the ball went over the pitcher's head, it was going to be a real tough play for Flynn. He bobbled it, but don't think it mattered. He was going to have a devil of a time throwing out Weisbrod, who runs pretty well. You can see, George just couldn't get to it, and real tough chance for the second baseman who doesn't feel it cleanly. He would have had a devil of a time getting that angel out at first. Very well stated. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Here's Derek Heffel, the pitcher, and a wild throw to first. Gets by Marson, who's held up a bit by the runner. Let's see if he's going to turn and go. He does. Weisbrod's going to make it to third. Well, he kind of held up the first baseman, Marson, who was going to retrieve the ball. 
But everything is ruled clean, and so Weisbrod gets all the way to third base. Yeah, I don't think Ellsworth, Steve Box even going to argue. Yeah. He's more concerned about his defensive alignment for the infield, and he's going to move those fielders in after the two-base error by the pitcher on the pickoff throw. Yep. So charge Georgicus with an error. Both teams with no runs, one hit, one error right now. And the fact he moves the infielders in on the grass in the second inning tells you yeah. that Steve Block feels this is going to be a pitcher's duel. And speaking of pitchers, Derek Heffel, the St. Catharines pitcher, is now facing the Panthers pitcher from Ellsworth, James Georgicus. So. If Heffel can help himself with an RBI here. One and one the count, though, as that one rides inside on Derek Heffel. Here we go, one five. Little surprise to see the infield in this early. Heffel, a good hitter, 368 in the year. And now one and two to Derek Heffel. Also, it's only given up two runs in their last three games. They blanked Altoona 4 0 and then beat West Salem 4 1 in the sectional semifinals and Somerset 5 1 in the sectional final. Effel's driven in 22 this year, but he goes down swinging on that at bat. That's a big out for James Georgicus and Ellsworth. Good pitch. Here it is again. Tied up the sophomore. So Weisbrod stays at third. Now two down, and it goes to Cody Ortiz, the number seven hitter for Racine St. Catharines. Ortiz, the first baseman for the Angels tonight. Ortiz, 314 on the season, and he swings at strike one. No homers, 14 ribbies for the right-handed hitting first baseman. Georgicus drops that one in for a strike. 0 oh, 2. Georgicus trying to get out of the threat with two out here. And the breaking ball in the dirt. Volker will have to throw to Marson to get the out. He does. So a couple of strikeouts. And they strand the runner at third. Mid pitching by James Georgicus there to keep it nothing, nothing. We go to top of the third. No score. There's some of the Prescott players and fans. They're having a good old time here at the ballpark. It's a guy who dropped the fly ball in the first inning, too, in the back, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh he's had fun. Moved on. Moved on. Ellsworth in third. Dennis Schutz, Brady Schroeder, and Jake Bedhauser. Prescott will play for the Division Three title tomorrow against Parkview. 
championship matchups always are pretty good. I think we've got three pretty good ones on the board right now, and we're going to have a heck of a deal in Division Two. I just don't know who it's going to be yet. Well, you got to think the Prescott folks are pulling for Ellsworth. Yeah. Yeah. From their own middle be border a, conference. Yeah, yeah. Good old Northwestern Wisconsin Conference showdown. Prescott beat Ellsworth twice this year, if you were wondering. Six to four and seven to four. That's two of Ellsworth's, Ellsworth's yeah. five losses. Yeah, how about that? You get two two champ, two state champions on the same conference. That's that doesn't happen every day. And a swinging strike three gets Dennis Schutz. Third strikeout for Heffel. Brady Schroeder. Another look at Schutz going after one in the dirt. Straight deal for him. Here's Schroeder, flew out to left field his first time up. That was back in the first inning. And looks at strike one. Brady Schroeder is an accomplished pianist. Really? Yeah. That's a bender for strike two. Lives on a farm. Gets up every day, does his chores, works his tail off to be a great pitcher, says Steve Block. Gonna have a career in agribusiness or business administration. He'll play baseball when in Nona State. Yeah, when Nona State's got a assistant coach here scouting their future player. They want to presume will be their shortstop. But. Yeah. Schroeder, an all conference player, is a sophomore and a junior, three time captain also for Ellsworth. So he is certainly a leader in a lot of ways, and he's called out on strikes there. So two strikeouts for Heffel to start the third inning here. Four in the night. Schroeder just took all the swing. So two up, two down on strikeouts here in the third, and now it's to Jake Bethauser, the shortstop. Another one drops in there for a strike. Breaking ball by the sophomore. And a line drive off the glove of Idol at third. That's a base hit into the corner. Cunnington picks it up, but not before Bedhauser pulls into second with a double. That's about the best hit ball of the night for Ellsworth is Bedhauser double. Indeed, Bedhauser squares this one up. Idol, tell you, probably should have caught it, but this ball is really hit hard. And he leaped and. Might have got a glove on it, but that's going to be a heck of a play if he makes it as it is. Bethauser has a double, then it is a hit. Don't scoreboard flashes it, but boy, anybody who was questioning that's never played third base. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second hit of the night for Ellsworth. And now Tyler Marson. Boy, I tell you that that breaking ball from Elf, well, that looks pretty good. But now Ellsworth are the runner in scoring position and two down. And a runner to second in the first inning. Shoots at an interesting way to get there, though. He reached after a strikeout, a third strike, bounced off Caprellian's catcher's gear. So that got shoots to first, and then an errant pickoff throw got him to second, but he was stranded there with one out. Caprellian wants to go over the signs with Heffel with the man on second base. I think they'll change him up. Recall Marson hit the ball pretty well last inning. Hit the ball, shot the ball in the yeah. gap. I mean, would have had a double had he not missed first base. He had a retreat to go back and tag the bag and didn't get any further than first. All one coming to Marson. And dug out nicely by Caprellian. You know, when, when Caprellian came out to the mound, I know that Heffel was standing on the mound, but boy, it looked like there was a big difference in height. Sure enough, there is. Heffel 6'4, the catcher. Caprellian's 5'8. But they're working well so far as it's nothing, nothing in the third inning. Ellsworth with two hits, St. Catharines with only one. Wow. 
One one coming to Tyler Marson. Punched foul, right field side. Out of the big grassy area, up a little short of that. Hey, there's a Prescott fan. Picking up the baseball, he'll return that. Well, what's the going rate? You just give them back to the uh, ball boys, that's about it? Yeah, I don't think you get anything other get, than a hearty handshake. <laughs> you used to get a quarter of a hot dog or so. But now you get hearty congratulations. That's During the Division Three baseball, college baseball tournament here, you got a Reese's peanut butter cup. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I thought that was a good deal. In fact, I wanted to shag for a couple of games. <laughs> games I wasn't doing, I was out there. I'm a big fan of Reese's. <laughs> it's what I hear. I know what else you're a big fan of, Blue Moon ice cream. Yep. That, that's tasty stuff. But that's what the going rate was during the college tournament. I don't know what it is during the high school tournament. And I assume during the Timber Rattler games, you get to keep the ball. Oh, I think about it. There have been so many foul balls that have bounced off the metal roof and out of the seats. I mean, that's, that's an expensive proposition. You let people keep them. 2-2. Two -two. In the air, that's going to get out of play. Again, just down the first baseline. That college tournament, eh? they spend no expense. Wow. Every home run, kids under 16 got Hershey candy bars and Reese's wow. peanut. So we were all pulling for the long ball. We only had six home runs in, in six days here, but yeah. it was a bonanza hey. of chocolate when it happened. Uh, you can't beat that. A big rush people, to the concession stands when people love the long ball, <laughs> they say. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking for our first run of the game at the top of the third two down. Bedhauser in scoring position at second after a double. Low, three and two. Well, Marson's done a good job of battling the right hander, making him work. Bedhauser will be off with the pitch with the count three and two and two out. Hot shot, right field base hit. Bedhauser's going to try and score. There won't be a play. And Ellsworth leads 1-0 on the RBI single by Tyler Marson. Second straight inning. Marson goes the other way. A nice piece of hitting. Yeah. And opposite field. And with two out, Bedhauser was off and running. He didn't have to run. And there was nobody at first, but with two out, he got a good break, and drew, there was no throw. Ellsworth has the early lead here in the third. Ball was hit fairly sharply, but it took a couple of hops. It died in that outfield grass, so McDonald, the right fielder, really didn't have much of a chance to try and make a play at the plate, because, as you say, Bedhauser got that good jump. So RBI single from Marson, and it's one nothing Panthers. 23rd RBI of the year for Tyler Marson. A junior. Go get this guy, D, come on now. Tyler Marson, honorable mention, all-conference in baseball. He, too, a cross-country runner at Ellsworth. And he ran to first base and drove in the first run of the game. Heffel steps off. There you see the lead at first by Tyler Marson. Kind of more of a distance runner than a guy who's going to go 90 feet. He's 3-for-3 yeah. three three in stolen bases. He'll be good in the two mile though. Well, they say it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yep. Yeah. If the bases were two miles apart, he'd be in great shape. They're going to keep Marson close. One pitch now, one five. Cody Ortiz, the first baseman, giving Heffel a target if he chooses to throw over there. He doesn't. And he throws the heat past James Georgicus. One and two, the count to the Ellsworth pitchers in the left-handed batter's box right now against Heffel. Heffel from the stretch delivers and got the outside corner for strike three. Well, strikeouts starting to mount for Derek Heffel. Struck out the side there around a couple of hits. 
One of those hits drove in a run. Bedhauser doubled. Tyler Marson with the RBI as you look at that last strikeout for Heffel. A run on two hits for Ellsworth. They leave one. Racine St. Catharines comes up at the bottom of the third inning. Ellsworth, the home team. Racine St. Catharines, excuse me, Ellsworth, the visiting team. St. Catharines, the home team tonight. So here come the Angels with eight, nine, and one in the order. Eric Idle, Nick Davidovic, and Nathan Simons to face Ellsworth pitcher James Georgicus. And that is strike one for the Ellsworth left hander. Started today at 8 in the morning, and now it's approaching 11 o'clock at night. And that one's fouled off down the first baseline, the third baseline, rather. And 0 2 the count. Georgicus's fan four allowed one infield hit to the first two innings. Georgicus trying to finish off the leadoff batter idle and missed it. A high one, one and two. Our home plate umpire from Hortonville, Dave Steiger. Larry Holshue from Kimberly is our first base umpire. Josh Shaler from Holman at second base, and Steve Seavalls from Rice Lake at third. And Steve Seavalls doing a lot of basketball at the state tournament as well, officiating. There's a nice play by Bedhauser as he throws out Eric Idle, one down. Nice play by the shortstop. That's what you ask your shortstop. Yep. Make the routine play. For the third straight inning, Georgicus gets the leadoff man thanks to that play by Bethauser. Yep. Nick Davidovic. First time up for Davidovic as we Complete the cycle of the batting order for Racine St. Catharines for the first time. We had only one base runner. That was Eric Weisbrod, who singled, made it all the way to third on an errant pickoff throw, but then was left stranded. He was a third with one out. And Heffel and Ortiz struck out in the second. The Angels haven't hit the ball out of the infield yet. All yeah, right. They really haven't squared up a ball yet. Four strikeouts for Georgicus. And then Bunch of infield outs. Three ground outs. Three ground outs in the infield. Yep. In the infield hit, if you recall, was a boundary that went over the pitcher's mound and went had trouble handling it. You're picking up crowd Mike from yeah. the Ellsworth dugout. There's your first line drive hit. Really good. All of that one and lined it to the left for the base hit. So Davidovic with a one-out single. He's was one of two seniors and provides some leadership there as the DH is aboard with one out in the third. Right between the hole, third and short. And that's a clean single. And 
Second hit of the night for Racine St. Catherine. Still looking for the first run, though. Top of the order, Nathan Simons. Strikeout victim his first time. That's another hit, this one. Past the second baseman, Flynn. Station to station. Davidovic stops at second, Simons at first. And a couple of consecutive hits with one out. This piece of hitting by Simons with Flynn cheating towards second. Simon spots the hole between first and second. Ball one hit hard, but there was nobody there. So best threat of the night for Racine St. Catharines. Although they did get a run at a third. Huh? But their first time with two men on, only one out. Then you're getting to the meat of the order. Yeah. So it's Luke Cunnington. Cannot. Grounded out to second his first time up. Didn't miss by much, but it's a ball, 1 0. Lucas cannot. First and second, one out. Fouled back off the fists, 1 and 1. Good look at James Georgicus, the Ellsworth pitcher. He'll work from the stretch with runners in first and second. And he'll throw, make a fake throw to second to chase Davidovic back. Benhauser, pretty conscious about holding the runner at second close. comes a 1-1 and this is popped up. Let's see if anybody can get it. Third baseman Matter. Nice running catch there as he went quite a ways to get that foul pop. So Connaughton is now on the foul out to third and there are two down. Runners still at first and second. Big out for Georgicus who took charge of this play. As you see he, the catcher Volker and Matter all converge but I think the pitcher called the third baseman's name. And he made a pretty easy play about what could have been a collision of three. That's a big out. Yeah. So Georgic is now only an out away from getting out of some significant trouble here in the third. And it's the catcher, A.J. Caprelli, and the number three hitter in the St. Catharines lineup. Boy, there you see the frustration of Caprelli. And as he went after that one, that was down at his ankles. 0-1 to Caprelli. Another one on the dirt, stopped nicely by Brandon Volker, the catcher. With one out, Nick Davidovic singled. He moved to second on a single by Nathan Simons. But Connaughton fouled out. Caprellian's now up with a one and one count, two down. He came up empty on that one, that's one and two. As you say, Georgia seems to have this fellow's number. Even Caprillion's body language after <laughs> that swing and miss wasn't good. He took a little walk by himself. And another look back at second. Hey, you're the man. Come on, bud. <laughs> What's going on down there in the dugouts? <laughs> A 
Mike Brown even got sick of waiting. See the cars flying by behind George because that's Highway 41, right? Off the outfield fence here at Cox City Stadium. Just south of Green Bay and just outside of Appleton. Here's the one, two. Oh, good job by Caprelli, and he didn't go looking at that high, hard one, two and two. And he's going to want to make something happen on this pitch. He doesn't want to give the runners an opportunity to run on 3-2 because then one of the gap scores two runs. So this is the action pitch for the left-hander. Oh, he got the outside corner with a breaking ball. Caprellian wasn't happy about it. He's barking at the umpire. And Dave Steiger takes a couple of steps toward the Racine St. Catharines dugout. He didn't want to hear any more out of that. That is strike three, and boy, Georgicus with some gutsy pitching there to strike out Caprelli and end the threat. St. Catharines gets a couple of hits, but leaves the runners stranded at first and second. Three complete Division II semifinals. Winner plays Portage for the title tomorrow. Right now, Ellsworth reads Racine St. Catharines 1-0. We move now to the top of the fourth inning, and the Ellsworth Panthers hold on to that one nothing lead. They scored in the top of the third inning on an RBI single by Tyler Marson. That's all the scoring we have so far. And there's a hard hit ball to left field. Kroll on his horse, and he misjudged it. Well, he stopped retreating. It looked like he was going to make the catch, but then all of a sudden he realized it was over his head. That's going to be a leadoff double for Mitch Matter. That ball kept carrying. I don't know if the wind was a factor in this or not, but I agree with you. I thought the left fielder drifted back like I got it, had it measured, and then all of a sudden looked up, whoops, yeah. the ball's <laughs> over his head. Hey, One well, hop off the wall. It was a hard hit ball, I'll give you that, but now all of a sudden. No, well, I thought he had it measured, and turns out to be a double, and okay. Ellsworth looking to add on. Now Chandler Flynn, I fouled that off. I don't think the wind, the ball got high enough to yeah. have the uh, wind be a factor. Yeah, well, it did, the wind didn't hurt it any, but yeah, I think you're right. I think that was just an error in judgment to the, the left fielder. And Lucas Cunnington is the uh, left fielder for Christine St. Catharines. Now this butt's popped up in the air. Let's see, oh, nearly a... Another great diving catch by Caprellian, but this one he cannot make, so that'll be a strike. 0-2. Oh, two. Two oh, 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 oh. well, as much as Caprellian didn't like the call to end the third inning as a hitter, you know he's going to want that pitch here in the fourth inning when he's a catcher for his pitcher. Well, with two strikes, it looks like Chandler Flynn's going to become a hitter, not a bunter. Heppel steps off, and now he'll reset, look in for the sign. 0 and 2 the count to Flynn. Matter led off the inning with a double to left. And another breaking ball strikeout for Heffel. 
Second time Flynn's been punched out. So he fails to advance the runner. Breaking ball gets Connor Flynn. For Chandler Flynn. You can see Flynn's body shifted early, and then he realized it was a curveball, and he just couldn't readjust and catch up. Gizzi takes a strike, 0 and 1. Matter still out at second base. Now one out and an 0-1 count to Dan Gizzi, the designated hitter for Ellsworth. That one's fouled back. And quickly, Gizzi falls behind 0-2. Ellsworth has had a runner, at least one runner in every inning so far. But only one has scored. That was Jake Benhauser who doubled and came home on Marson's RBI single in the third. There you see number one, Dan Giese for Ellsworth. Ellsworth made it to the sectionals for the first time since 2006 and made it to state for the first time ever. Popped up. Let's see if Idle's going to have a play the third baseman. That was a tough chance. And it lands on the warning track, but foul. This is a tough play for a third baseman. Got a long way to go. The shortstop may have the best angle at it, but he was pulled over cognizant of keeping the runner at second close to second. So Idle's the only one who can make the play. And again, that's a tough play for a third baseman. Sure. Okay, so Giese gets another chance. One and two the count. Heffel will take a look at their honor. Matter at second. And he delivers. And it's high for two and two. Talk about the sectional. We noted it yesterday, Bob, uh, Bob Brandon and I. West Salem was in that sectional back in the semifinals. West Salem's traditionally been a summer baseball power. They made the decision to play spring baseball this year for the first time. And I would think that adds a different look to yeah. that sectional for Ellsworth. Yeah, summer baseball pretty much limited at the southeast corner of the state now, right? Yeah. And as such, the state tournament moved from Stevens, from Stevens Point Stevens. to the new facility in Concordia University in Mequon. And it will be a four-team tournament on one day, July 20th, instead of an eight-team tournament over two days in Stevens Point. 3-2 pitch now, and chop foul. Well, you talk to WI folks, and they claim there is a future for summer baseball. That it will not be diminished. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, move of the summer baseball tournament got considerably less play than the move of the girls' basketball tournament from... I would have to Madison agree with you Green Bay. <laughs> as a media on, <laughs> observer. <laughs> but significant nevertheless. Another payoff pitch to Gizzi. Hot shot, but foul. Wisconsin is one of two states, I believe, that has both a spring baseball tournament here, this is what's going on now, and a summer baseball tournament next month. And summer baseball... Now generally it consists of the suburban Milwaukee schools along with the new Holstein area. West Bend West is a power. But it's generally the German towns and the Oak, right. Oak Creeks and the Heartland Arrowheads. And talking to some of the college guys just between games and over the last couple of days, they were saying they'd like to see one tournament with maybe a couple of weeks later. Mm -hmm. Because you see it when you go to summer baseball, and Bob and I traditionally do that. There's a walk. And ball for Wild Geezy. Give him credit for having a pretty good at bat and drawing the walk. Well, you see guys that are in shape. I mean, they don't have to battle the elements as spring baseball yeah. traditionally does, this year being the exception yeah, with the good weather. It sure but, was. But generally, summer baseball, the season starts – by Memorial Day and it ends the end of July. So you get guys to play when the weather's good and your arms are in better shape by the time you get the state tournament. 
Top of the order for Volker. And that one misses. It's ball one. Ellsworth with a one out threat here, first and second. Good look at Derek Heffel, the sophomore starting pitcher for Racine St. Catharines. Ooh, Volker looked to bunt it. Flash the bat, got a strike. And also an, an issue, I'm talking about the future of summer baseball. American Legion is strong in some parts of the state. And if you moved the spring season back, for instance, and just had one season, it would affect American Legion programs. And they have a significant lobby in the state, shall we say. Lifted to shallow right field where Nathan Simons, the second baseman, will get it. Volker retired, two out. Big out there to get Volker the leadoff hitter with two on. And now shoots hits. He's struck out twice in two appearances tonight against Apple. There you see shoots wearing number 30 in the front of his Ellsworth Panther uniform. RBI chance for him with runner at second, but now two out. And Falls behind with one strike. Ellsworth's had a lot of base runners. They have stranded five in the first three innings. They've got two more out there here in the fourth. Dennis Schutz was second team all conference in the outfield as a sophomore. And this one's popped a mile high. Let's see who's going to get it. Communication the key here. And the catcher, Caprellian, sticks with it and gets the out. So shoots, fouls out to Caprellian to end the Ellsworth fourth. So a double and a walk, but two are stranded. Another look at Caprellian's call and catch to end the Ellsworth fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Nothing much changed on the scoreboard. One nothing Ellsworth. And Ellsworth run of the third inning still holding up as we go to the bottom of the fourth. We're seeing St. Catharines. But it's turned into a pitcher's duel between Derek Heffel at St. Catharines and James Georgicus of Ellsworth. But the meat of the we're seeing St. Catharines order the heart of it. Four, five, and six. Smith, Weisbrot, and Heffel to face Georgicus. And Smith, let's see if he went around. They'll check with the first base umpire and Larry Holshue says, yep, he went around, so strike one to Shea Smith. Only the second time around in the batting order for Racine St. Catharines. Got a good call by the first base umpire. Uh -huh. So Smith with a one strike count. And good look there at ball one. Shea Smith, as we said, all conference first team is a sophomore. 441 hitter. The homer in 26 RBIs. That's how you get all conference. Yeah. Good athlete. Yep. Now, oh, part of that, you mentioned large junior class. You see the wind. Maybe he's died down a few miles an hour now, but still going from the right field corner to the left field corner. It's been your caucus's best pitch. Yep. Breaking ball. 2-2 now to Shea Smith, trying to get things started here in the fourth for Racine St. Catharines. Well, Paul Wall. Golfed that one. 
Maybe that breaking, breaking ball has been his second best pitch. Strike one, I think, has been his first pitch. Yep. He has worked ahead in the count all night. Hasn't walked anybody. He has struck out five. You'll never have a bad night if you don't walk anybody. I know that. It's 2-2. Two -two. Oh, he wanted the outside edge and just missed it. Full count. And Smith has worked the count full. And he doesn't want to walk the leadoff guy here. He's kept Dude. the leadoff man off in every inning. And he yeah. lost him. Tried again to hit the outside corner and missed. So Smith walks to lead off the fourth. Tip your hat to Smith. Who was behind on the count and works the first walk of the night. So the leadoff man's on. He's the tag run at first here in the fourth. Winner of this game will play Portage for the Division II Championship scheduled for 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon here at Time Warner Cable Field at Fox City Stadium in Grand Chute. Up next is Eric Weisbrod, the Racine St. Catharines center fielder. He has one of the three Angels hits. First, they'll chase Shea Smith back to first. Panthers think that Weisbrod's going to bunt. They have Matter well in in the grass at third already, anticipating the bunt. The way this is going, a couple of runs might do it tonight. Not bunting that time, and Weisbrod watches the ball go by. And now we're going to have a conference between Brandon Volker, the catcher, and James Georgicus, the Ellsworth pitcher. Well, you notice that Georgicus has lost his location here. A little smile on the pitcher's face. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. What I, I think that was just, yeah, let's relax and get yeah. back in the rhythm he had. Yeah. So Weiss brought back in the left-handed batter's box and a one-nothing pitch coming to him. And that curve drops in. Up in the strike zone, but a strike, one and one. See if the bunts on out, the one the one-one count. Smith with a modest lead at first. Nope. Ball two. Smith on the air, eight for eight, and stolen bases. Moist proud, the hitter at the plate, leads the team with 15 steals. Oh, he inside out that one, and it's just foul. Nice pickup by Kerry Timler, the Racine St. Catharines head coach. 1980 graduate of Racine Park High School. He went on to play baseball at UW Lacrosse. Graduated with a bachelor's degree in Parks and Recreation Management. Love that show. <laughs> he took took over at Racine St. Catharines. Fourth season, 61 and 24. Pretty good start for Kerry Timler. Shot to the inside corner and missed against Weisbrod there. And again, the count's been worked full, 3-2. And now we'll see if Kerry Timler will start the runner. I would think he would. Weisbrod seems to handle the bat pretty well. Not likely to strike out. He's that running. And that's a strikeout of Weisbrod. Oh, catcher Volker couldn't find the ball, so... Well, worked out like a sacrifice, I guess, as Smith is able to take second. So, so Weisbrack strikes out. The ball gets away. I think you're gonna, he's going to say that it was interfered with here, but that's a plea that's going to fall on deaf ears. He's going to say that Weisbrack kept Volker from finding the ball and throwing out a runner, but, again, that ain't going to apply. It's about the shortest wild pitch you'll ever see. Yeah. But credit Smith for that's a base running. Yeah. A good secondary lead. Saw when the ball went away that he took off and he made it to second base. Every 90 feet pretty precious in a one nothing game in the fourth. Now here comes hit Derek Heffel, the pitcher. And he looks at strike one. Heffel struck out in the second is only time up. So man at second base then too. With one out. Same situation right now. 368 on the year for Derek Heffel. He could really use a hit right here, and time is called. Center fielder shoots, expecting Heffel to pull it, so there's a pretty good gap in right center field if Mr. Heffel could go the other way with it. Pitch outside. One and one. 
We're seeing get a runner to second with one out in the second, and Jujakakis struck out Heffel and then Cody Ortiz. Last inning with one out. David Davidovic and Simons got aboard. Late swing by Heffel, and it'll cost him as it's fouled off the end of the bat. That with two on and one out. The left-hander retired Connaughton on a pop-up and Caprillion on a strikeout. So he's been tough with men on base, or at least with the runners in scoring position. One out. Shea Smith, the runner at second. Derek Heffel, the batter, the count one and two. Georgicus checks the runner at second and delivers, and delivers strike three as Heffel went after the outside pitch. Two down. Big strikeout for Georgicus. So here comes the first baseman, Cody Ortiz. He, too, a strikeout victim. And now Georgicus is starting to pile up the strikeouts. That's seven for the Ellsworth left-hander. He's still leading at one nothing. Junior spent a lot of time. Too much time for Cody Ortiz. Ortiz, a 314 hitter coming into the tournament. 14 runs batted in for number 21. And that one's just a little high ball one. Mentioned Kerry Timler spent some time at Racine Park and he got some state tournament experience there as Pitch comes in and a late swing by Ortiz. Ball pops away from the catcher and Smith. Oh, he is an aggressive and alert base runner. He got to third. Again, the ball didn't get all that far away from Volker. But Smith takes advantage and he's 90 feet away from tying the game. Well, he can run too. Yeah. He said this ball doesn't get away far at all, but Volker can't throw him out. Nice slide to the outside of the bag and Matter can't get the glove down and safe is the call by Steve Seavolds. But I said uh, Timler was an assistant coach at Racine Park before he took over at St. Catharines and the Panthers of Racine Park while Timler was there won two conference championships and they played at state in 2007. So we're seeing St. Catharines first his team. There's a base hit, past the glove of Matter and into left. And look at that, Shea Smith's alert running gets Racine St. Catharines the run. It's 1-1. Yeah, that's a run you can credit to Shea Smith. Certainly credit Ortiz with a big two-odd hit. But it was Smith's alert base running on two wild pitches that didn't travel probably 50 feet between them. But Smith in third, and Ortiz brings him home to tie the game here in the fourth. He hung that breaking ball. Yep, yep. Ortiz was all over it. So 1-1 one, one is our score. Well, both teams with identical totals. One run, four hits, one error. Ellsworth with a run in the third. Racine St. Catharines with a run here in the fourth. 1-1. One, one. Batters now Eric Idle. Now we're seeing St. Catharines has hit only two balls out of the infield now. I get three, excuse me. One infield hit and then three singles to the outfield. Idle fights that one off and fouls it off 0-2. And there's that old adage, walks will haunt. <laughs> And indeed, the walk comes around. Smith, only walk that George Kakis has given up, comes around to score. There's a hot shot to center. Will it hang up for shoots? It will. Well played by the Ellsworth center fielder. Idle hit it hard, but flies out to center for the third out. But Shea Smith walks. Gets the second on a wild pitch, gets the third on a wild pitch, and then scores on the RBI single by Cody Ortiz. Four and a half complete Division II semifinals. Back to even. 1-1. One, one. Yep.
Well, we're seeing St. Catharines ties it up at the bottom of the fourth inning. We go to the top of the fifth. As there's that line shot by Ortiz. That was the hit that brought in Shea Smith with the tying run. It's a 1-1 as we go to the Ellsworth fifth. It'll be 3-4-5 in the order. Schroeder, Bethauser, Marson. Ball one. This guy's Schroeder. been pretty productive tonight. Three for six collectively. Yeah. Schroeder hadn't got a hit, but the other two fellas have. There's Ortiz. Another bender missing. Quickly 2-0 oh to Schroeder. Schroeder hit a homer in the sectional semifinal win against West Salem, so he has some power potential. And now 3-0. If you're halfway, you just don't want to walk that leadoff hitter. And he did. That one wasn't close. Fourth Leader. walk of the night given up by Apple. Who is flirting with trouble, as they say. It's the third time in five innings that the Panthers get the leadoff guy on. So the question is now, he has Betterhauser your cleanup guy to bunt or let him swing away he doubled in the third inning. I say you let him swing. I think that's what the coach is saying. Yep. That's what the Angels defense is thinking. They were playing back along the bag at first and third. And strike is called, so it's 0 1 to Bedhauser. There goes the runner. And the ball bounces away. It's a strike at the plate. Caprellian can't find it. And look at that. Schroeder's going to go to third. Taking a cue from his fellow shortstop. Schroeder broke on the pitch, got to second, and then you'll see he's looking in. He sees the ball scoot away from Capellian. He decides, I'm taking another base, as he knew the catcher couldn't find the ball. Well, and that's another wild pitch that doesn't go. Well, I think it'll be a stolen or, base in a wild yeah, pitch. Yeah, stolen base in a wild pitch. But, I mean, it didn't get that far away from the catcher right. again. But that time, two bases for Schroeder. That just heads up base running. I mean, yeah. credit to both Smith and Schroeder. And there, Bethauser Boy, that's strikes out. And Heffel comes back with a big strikeout. First out of the inning. Ooh, did that thing have some dip on it. So one out, Schroeder still a third. Here's Tyler Marson. He drove in the only Ellsworth run with a single back in the third inning. And this one gets away from Caprellian. Here comes Schroeder and Ellsworth back in front. Now Heffel's wild pitch brings home the lead run. But again, you got to credit, as we credited Smith with aggressive base running, that was Schroeder's aggressive base running. It's another breaking ball this time. That had too much movement, and Caprillion can't block it. Schroeder scores easily, and Ellsworth's regained the lead. But credit, again, the shortstop Schroeder for aggressively running the bases and setting up that run. Yeah. Well, Apples not shied away from throwing the breaking pitch tonight, but there's another one. It's in the dirt. That time it cost him, is it? It's a wild pitch off the curveball, and in comes Schroeder, and it's Ellsworth two, and we're seeing St. Catharines one. I'm in there. Here we go. That time, Heffel's fast ball is driven right back up the middle for a hit. Marson, what a night he's having. Three for three. And each time, he's hit the ball at the right fielder. She said it was kind of up the middle, but... They had fi figured out he likes to go oppo, yeah. and they plugged up the hole between first and second, so he hit the ball to the right yeah. of the second baseman. Yep. Again, the right fielder had bunched over. And it started up the middle, but then it sliced off to the right center field area, and yeah, that's another hit to the right side for Tyler Marson. Now here's the pitcher, James Georgicus. And a wild throw to first. Marson will hit second and make it safely. Another error on Christine St. Catherine, their second. 
That'll be on the pitcher. And now to the mound, the similar things down is Kerry Timler. Well, well Kerry Timler does that. Steve Block will yeah. gather his hitter, Georgicus, and his base runner, Marzen. Here's the pickoff play that goes awry. Well, that was a little high, but... Well, Ortiz, I think, has got to bring that one down. Yeah, I think so. They gave the air to the pitcher, regardless. Ellsworth is 30 miles from the Twin Cities, the county seat of Pierce County. And in 1984, Governor Tony Earle proclaimed Ellsworth the cheese curd capital of Wisconsin. Really? Here we go. Yeah. Now that one infield. Look they have a back. cheese curd festival every June. So it's coming up. Yeah. Why? I think they'd like to have a state baseball yeah. trophy to show. Yeah. Swinging strike to Georgicus. Never knew that was the cheese yeah. curd capital. You'll never guess who, uh, who Ellsworth was named after. A Civil War colonel named Elmer E. I'm guessing Ellsworth. You got it. You nailed it. Civil War historian. Well done. In fact, you see the, the town symbol of Ellsworth. You'll see a picture of a guy. That's Elmer Ellsworth. Go look it up. Georgicus fouled it back. One and two. I don't have any stationery from Ellsworth. <laughs> You, mean, look, you go to their website, you'll see okay. a picture of a guy, and it's Elmer Ellsworth, Civil War Colonel. There's a one and two to Georgicus. It's a Bolicus. Two and two. You know that four major highways intersect in Ellsworth? 10, 63, 65, and 72. I'm saying 94 doesn't go through there. Huh? 94 doesn't go. No, 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 no. Hot shot. Fair base hit. Matter. Or make that. Marson will score. Georgicus is going to go for three. And he'll make it standing. Look at Steve Block. He's loving it. What a hard hit ball by Georgicus. It's 3-1 Ellsworth. Yeah, that's a big run. Going to be a courtesy runner for Georgicus. Who pulls this one down the line. And once it gets past Ortiz, it goes for a long way into that corner. And Georgicus showed he's got some speed. He turned it on around first base, and he was not going to be denied, as you can see. He easily makes it to third with an RBI <laughs> triple. And look at the coach. 22 years doing it, and he still loves his job. I'll tell you. Nice job. That is a big run, and that is a big insurance run at third base. Still only one out for the Panthers. And now Mitch Matter, who is one for one with a walk and a double at the plate. They still aren't bringing the infield in. Again, showing a lot of confidence in their receiving offense. Nick Toronto is the runner again. Here's another hit that's going to fall in front of McDonald. And it's an RBI for Matter. And Toronto scores three in the inning. 4-1 Ellsworth. Boy, and all of a sudden, Heffel's given up some hits. A couple of them. Three of them. Another opposite field job. This is a blooper that falls in front of the right fielder. Chandler Flynn now up. One out. Breaking ball, call the strike as Flynn offered. Boy, we had a pitcher's duel going here all of a sudden. A walk started it. They'll haunt. Bedhauser struck out, and then Marson single. Georgicus triple, Matters single. Three for Ellsworth in the inning. Another breaking ball. That one missed. Now seven hits for Ellsworth. And there's activity for the first time tonight in the Racine St. Catherine's bullpen. It's like a left-hander warming up. That's number one, Colin Dreesen. He's a 
Five foot 10 inch junior left hander. He'll be working out the kinks out in the bullpen there. As he bounced one past the catcher. One out in the inning. Now they'll hold up play while they retrieve that ball down the left field line. And the bullpens for the high school teams now on the warning track down either line. So if you have somebody warming up, you have to have an extra person to try to protect against line drives that may come your way to foul down the, your way. Used to be a cutout section next to the dugout where the bullpens were here, but two years ago they filled that in with seats and built bullpens out in left and right center for the timber rattlers. But since the high school tournament has been held and the bullpens have been moved, they have deemed it legal to use the warning tracks down either line as warm up areas for relief pitchers. Here's a 3-2 pitch coming to Flynn, and he swings through at strike three. Second out of the inning, second strike out of the inning for Heffel. But around that, a walk and three base hits have led to three Ellsworth runs. Heffel has had Flynn's number tonight, though. That's the hat trick for Chandler. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Here's Dan Giese, the number nine hitter, but boy, he has had a couple of productive at-bats. He's walked twice. That swings there, strike one. Ellsworth with a run in the third and three here so far in the fifth. Top of the fifth, 4-1 Panthers. Jammed him, bouncing ball to second. Simons will go the short way. Smith covering, and that'll do it for the Ellsworth fifth with the Panthers. Hit the Angels with three. All right, different complexion of this game now as we're seeing St. Catharines comes up at the bottom of the fifth. And now they're trailing See the totals of our Division II semifinal. Bill Brophy, Jay Wilson with you. Thanks for staying up late now. It's almost quarter to 12. 4 7 and 1 for Ellsworth. 1 4 and 2 the totals for Racine St. Catharines. James Georgicus begins his fifth inning of work with a swinging strike to the number nine hitter in the Racine St. Catharines lineup. That's designated hitter Nick Davidovic. Georgicus now trying to protect that three-run advantage. And off to a good start with the hitter, Davidovic, 0-2. Looks like the Ellsworth batteries again having a little communication issues. So. Yeah, I don't know why Bulger went out there. Yeah. They clearly have Davidovic off stride. Get ahead of him with the fastball. Come back, off-speed breaking ball. He's ahead on the count 0-2. I, and Volker trotted out there. I really don't know what this uh, could have been about. Perhaps they're discussing the issues of the day. I don't know. Campaign here and all. There are a few. <laughs> I'd say there's a couple. Fouled off 0-2. 
Volker gets the foul ball back and hands it to home plate umpire Dave Steiger. Looks over to the bench for the signs. Most high school players, the coach or pitching coach will call pitches. Going outside with this one. Oh, and he painted the corner. I tell you what, Volker's glove didn't move an inch. Strike three. And that is a great shot with our center field camera. Yep. You're right, he hit the glove. Oh, he sure did. In the only inning that uh, Georgicus has allowed the leadoff hitter to reach was the fourth when he walked Smith. That's the only run. Simons looked to butt his way on, but fouled it back. Tough pitch to a butt. This is a high, hard one. Foul it off. One for two for Simons tonight. He has one of the four receiving St. Catherine's hits. That one stays high. One and one the count. Be back at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning with the Division Four championship game. Coleman and Johnson Creek. Line foul. A little late on that one. Hit it hard, but down the right field side. Yeah, four games tomorrow. 9, 12, 3, and 6. Coleman and Johnson Creek, Division 4 at 9. Parkview and Prescott at noon. That's the Division 3 matchup. Portage gets the winner of this game at 3. And Bayport and Sun Prairie play at 6 for Division 1. Ground ball to second. Flynn ranging over. Bobbles throws late. Ball was hit pretty well, and Flynn got there, but then... Couldn't finish the deal, and that will be Simons getting on base. They're giving an error to the second baseman, Flynn. It's a good call. Got to make that play. Yep. Tough chance. You got to make the play. So one on with one out. Here's Lucas Cunnington. In down three runs, you wouldn't think Simons would run. But we have seen some strange base running in this yeah. Yeah. last two days. Simon's at first with one out. 0 1 1 the count. I'll chase Simon's before the next pitch to home plate. Nathan, 10 of 10 in stolen base attempts. So they'll be keeping a close watch on him. As Conaton fouls it off, 0-2. All those championship games tomorrow, by the way, will be available on your computer at foxsportswisconsin.com. And tape delayed on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Yeah, later this month, I think. Yeah. Good job. Show it around those Brewer games. And if you're a fan of soccer, that tournament opens tomorrow in Milwaukee. FoxSportsWisconsin.com will have those games as well as the state softball tournament wow. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from Goodman Diamond in Madison. It's really quite remarkable. You can go to all three places from the comfort of your home. And really the, the quality of the production and the video has really improved. If you haven't checked it out lately, it's it's really worth, worth it. Of course, if you're hearing our voices, you're watching on the computer right now, so you do know about it. Ball from Georgicus missed, and so Connaughton at the plate, one and two. Good looking left-handed swinger for Racine St. Catharines. Up the middle. They'll go to second for one and safe at first. Nearly turned the double play, but got it to beat the throw. I think Bethauser is mad at himself. But the pitcher didn't give him a, a real good feed either. But come back to the mound. I guess we won't see it. That's the play at first for oh, he is safe. But Larry Holshu got that one. Clearly correct at first. And Jorkakis 
delayed for a second before giving Bettenhauser the throw, and then I think he doubled clutch and had trouble getting the ball out of his glove on the relay. Caprellian now at the plate. First to throw over to get the runner back. Caprellian, tough night at the plate. Two strikeouts. See if St. Catharines can make Ellsworth pay for that extra out. In the dirt, stopped by Volker. Here's the play, comebacker to the mound. Right there. See, he has ball. Just a hesit, yep. Just a hiccup in there. Yep. Bethauser has trouble getting the ball out of his glove, and that split second both at the mound and around the bag. Cost an inning game double play. And gives Racine St. Catharines another chance to hit with a man on and two outs here in the fifth. Curveball drops in for a strike for Georgicus. One and one, the count to the batter, A.J. Caprellia. Who has had a tough night with that breaking ball all night. Stays high, throw to first by Volker. And runner back safely. See Marson trying to replicate a sweep tag. Just a little late with that one. 2-1 to Caprellian. And he swings and hits it a second. This could be two. Well, they only need one, so <laughs> second baseman Flynn steps on second for the force out. So, after an error, St. Catharines can't do much with it. So the Angels are out in the fifth. Top of the six coming up. Three run fifth. The difference is Ellsworth leads Racine St. Catharines 4 1. Late at night, but the fans are still enjoying themselves here. They had a chance to see themselves on the scoreboard. Twins fan there, nice. Of course, Ellsworth not that far from the Twin Cities, so makes sense. Top of the order for Ellsworth here in the top of the sixth. It'll be Volker, Schutz, Schroeder. One, two, and three in the lineup for Steve Block. Eric Heffel still on the mound for St. Catharines. Had a pretty good job, but was hit pretty hard in that fifth inning. Where Ellsworth came up with the three runs. Volker tonight is 0 for 3. A couple of pop outs and a fly ball to left field. I know I've been here a long time, but didn't I see activity in the Ellsworth you bullpen a couple what? seconds ago? I tell you what. Oh, there's a hot shot to left center field. Let's see if they can chase it down. The outfielders come together, and the catch is made by Lucas Connaughton. 
Nice play by Connaughton. He went a long way. Made the catch with Weisbrod there, too. Volker hits the gap on left center, and it's the left fielder who makes the catch, and it's a good thing he did because Weisbrod, I think, was trying to make the catch and didn't get to the ball. So leadoff batter retired, and now Dennis shoots the hitter. And but going back to my rhetorical question, between <laughs> innings. Yeah, no question. There was warming. Uh, there was action of the bullpen, no question. But there isn't now. No, no. <laughs> I think uh, that it was Isaac Hines. Isaac Hines was Yeah, throwing. I think he got about three warm-up pitches in, and then, okay. Either he said, I'm ready to go, or they didn't need him. Popped up. Three players coming together. Center fielder takes charge and overruns the ball. Weisbrod called it and then overran it. And now the throw gets away. And the batter's going to be at second base. Wow. Yeah, it's a sloppy play on a routine fly ball to center. Shoots ends up in second. This could be a double error. Yeah. Well, you got to give him a hit, right? Because nobody touched it. Well, let's see. Well, let's see. It's yeah. going to be an error. I didn't think anybody touched it. Weisbrod. Weisbrod calls it. Yeah. I don't know if he touched it or not. He should have made the catch, no doubt about that. Well, and then he makes an errant throw and yeah. allows shoots to go to second. Let's call it a yeah. two-base error on the center fielder. So E8 up on the scoreboard. So, well, that was what doesn't care what they called as long as they got their guy at second base. Here's Schroeder. Four errors on the Angels today. They have as many errors as they have hits. Yeah. Uncharacteristic. So an opportunity knocking for Ellsworth to add to that three-run lead. Oh, Schroeder, big swing and a miss. Activity now in the receiving bullpen as well. Schroeder's a heck of a pitcher. If Ellsworth would get to the final tomorrow, you'd figure Schroeder would be the guy. Yeah, allowed three hits and struck out eight in the sectional final win over Somerset. Yeah, now check out number 30, the runner at second, Dennis Schutz. Watch what he does before Heffel delivers to the plate. Trying to distract him. Look at that. Dance fever. And Schroeder strikes out. Two down. Shoots still at second. Jake Bedhauser out of the plate. One for three for Bedhauser, doubled, scored around the third. It's getting late for Racine St. Catharines. They got to hold Ellsworth here. Strike on the inside corner. Bedhauser didn't think so, but 0-1 is the count. Watch that, number 30. Watch that runner try and distract. Go on, stop him. Well, one ever done to distract the hitter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, I'm sure something would be said uh, if that were the case, but I got to think if you're a hitter, you often see the hitter ask the umpire to move because he's a distraction. Well, kind of a half-hearted attempt by Bedhauser there. Tap and foul. And the count goes to one and two on the Ellsworth shortstop, the cleanup hitter, Jake Bedhauser. Two and two now. We approach the midnight hour. Oh, by the way, Matt Kane of the San Francisco Giants. Pitched a perfect game tonight. Ground ball to the third, long throw. Pops past the first baseman, Ortiz. Here comes Schutz with a run. And another error against the Angels. Boy, and that's on a routine play. Five errors on the number one team in Division Two. Ellsworth adds another unearned run, and it's five to one. That's an idol. He's got a lot of time, takes the crow hop. And just makes a bad throw. Ortiz can't come up with it. Being air in the third baseman. 
Matt Kane of the San Francisco Giants pitched a perfect game tonight. 10 0 over the Astros. Struck out 14 batters. So that is the 22nd perfect game ever? I believe that's right. Second one this year. <laughs> For some reason, Philip Umber got the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since that perfect game, Philip Umber has been less than perfect. We had no hitter here today earlier. That was very cool. That's very, pretty neat. Okay, 5 1 now, Ellsworth. And they keep the line moving with two outs. Here's Tyler Marson. He's had a perfect night. Three for three. And boy, if I'm receiving, I got to play him to hit the. Right field. Yeah. He's done it three times and he's made no bones about it. Wow. Put that shift on. Put three infielders over there. Well, maybe. the center field, they still play him to pull. Yeah. I mean, they didn't put him straight away. They figure he's going to pull the ball. Strike. I think these spray charts will show otherwise. <laughs> I think so. But they probably won't publish them until tomorrow. So <laughs> they'll know tomorrow if there is a tomorrow. Look at that. Right side. Oh, in the first baseman. Oh, he did get it. I thought that skipped under the glove of Ortiz, but he does handle it. Three unassisted, and that will retire Marson, and that will retire Ellsworth in the sixth. But a big run goes on the board for the Panthers. A couple of St. Catherine's errors had a lot to do with it. 5-1, Ellsworth. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Getting late in our Division II semifinal. Ellsworth, run in the third, three in the fifth, or another run in the sixth, five, one, the Panthers. And that guy has been pretty effective on the mound, the left-hander George James Georgicus. Again, pretty Ellsworth. simple formula. You throw strike one, get ahead yeah. of hitters, don't walk anybody, and true? get that leadoff hitter. It's pretty simple, and everybody knows it, but to do it is another thing. Yep. All right. Seeing St. Catharines hasn't lost since April 12th. It's wow. getting late. Yeah. Georgicus. Here's been his best pitch. That slow breaking ball. Oh, midnight. Happy Thursday to you, Jack. Bong. Thanks, bro. Smith off the fist. This is going to be on the infield. Bedhauser calling and makes the catch one out. Gets that leadoff guy again. And I know I'm happy that we've gone past midnight for the second straight yeah. day of yeah. State nice. Tournament Baseball. Isn't that great? Eight in the morning, we get here and Whoa. finish up after 12. Yeah. Our hats off to the camera crew and the guys in the truck yeah, for so, hanging in there with us. Yeah. So later today, we'll all be back for the Division Four championship game at 9 o'clock. Here's Eric Weisbrod. That's one of the four Racine St. Catharines hits. Also struck out one for two in the game. Weisbrod had the clutch hit, so strike two. He had the clutch hit, the two out, two strike single at the top of the eighth. To give Racine St. Catharines the winning run against Wapon in the sectional final. They were losing 3-1 of that game. 
Came back and won it 4-3, thanks to the two-run single by Weisbrod. And that you can bet that message was probably given yeah. prior to this inning. We can do it, guys, but they're down their last five outs. Nearly hit them. Two and two. Back them off the plate. They were the one-two pitch. Oh. I was trying to find some orange and black Portage Warriors who were in the Division II championship game. They were here scouting or not. Oh, late swing by Weisbrod. I'll, I'll bet you they got a coach yeah. down behind on plate doing a pretty yeah. good job. So you got to be here somewhere. He's noticed that your caucus and did the same thing Matt Bortz did yeah. three hours yeah. ago. And that's get ahead of hitters, throw strikes, don't walk anybody. In and out, up and down. Fouled off, that'll reach the seats. He beat Ryan Redu of Valley Lutheran in a wasn't really a pitcher's duel. Redu's going to Connecticut on a D1 scholarship and hasn't been known to throw in the 90s. He didn't tonight, but yeah. but he got out pitched by Bortz. Yeah. We do hit four batters in the first inning. Portage responded to a one run by Fox Valley Ruth from scoring four in the bottom of the half inning. And Jorkakis walks his second hitter. Weisbrod takes the walk. Yeah, good job by Weisbrod to coax that walk. Derek Heffel now up for Racine St. Catharines. Well, if he Portage Warriors or any of you are watching us tonight on. FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Good for you for getting home. Getting home early and watching us. We appreciate you stopping by. Georgicus, that one bounces off the catcher. Volker throws down to second, but not before Weisbrod makes it safely. Yeah, nice piece of base running by Weisbrod, who, as Shea Smith did in the fourth, when... The Angels scored their only run, took advantage of the ball skipping away from the catcher, using a good secondary lead and reading the play properly, advancing the base. Want to know the count of the hitter, Heffel? Went after the high one and followed it down the right field side. See a bunch of blankets and heavier jackets now as the temperature slips into the mid 50s. It'll be another beautiful day tomorrow for the four state championship games. Flynn holding the runner close to second. I don't understand that. It leaves a big space between first and second. Time Tulsa's up by four runs. Yeah. The run at second really meaningless. If you give him that whole side, he can just punch the ball to the right side, and it's a run scoring signal. And I mean, Flynn will sneak back some after the pitch, but look at how far they Yeah, he, he doesn't get back. All that much farther from I where mean, he is. Play your conventional defense. And yeah. hey, look at that hole. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't make, percentage-wise, it doesn't make any sense. I was going to say, you or I could probably drive one through that hole. Well, if you could hit the ball <laughs> the opposite field. <laughs> we'd be swinging so late, we'd have a chance. That's when he pulls foul. And nice little dance by Kerry Timler to get out of the way of that one. And Jordan Kakis. It's the count even a 2-2 to Heffel, and he's had Derek's number tonight. Heffel has fanned twice. Gary Temler trying to get his guys to get some more hits. They need some runs to catch up. They're down four here in the bottom of the sixth. James Georgicus is sparkling on the mound for Ellsworth. Off the end of the bat, could be a tough play, but it carries out to right field where Schroeder makes the catch for the second out. Well, Heffel had the right idea, but he needed to hit the ball on the ground. Instead, he pops up, an easy play for the right fielder, Schroeder, and there's two out. And now you better pick up that run at second base because it's getting pretty late for the Angels. Well, here's the guy who drove in the only run for Racine St. Catharines, Cody Ortiz, with a line single to left in the fourth. And drove home Shea Smith with the only Angels tally tonight. Two out. This tie, 1 0. Wind has died down considerably, and now it's blowing. Out to left center, but it's only about five to ten miles an hour now. Still might give a ball to left to right center a little push. 
Not nearly as significant as it was at the start of our game when it was blowing 15 to 20 miles an hour. Strike call there to Cody Ortiz, the hitter for Racine St. Catharines. Chopper, left side. Shortstop Bedhauser throws. Got it, nice play. Strong arm by Jake Bedhauser. Gets Ortiz by a step. Ellsworth comes up in the seventh inning, leading 5-1. A few fans still hanging with us after midnight. What the heck, school's out. Might as well watch baseball. Somebody's texting. And here, yeah, it's Colin Dreesen. Left-hander in for Derek Heffel. A couple of changes for Racine St. Catharines. Cody Ortiz was playing first. He's now on the right. Derek Heffel was the pitcher. He's now playing first. And Colin Dreesen on the mound for the Angels. And he's behind and counts even 1-1. One, one. On the year, Colin Dreesen is 4-0 with a 162 earned run average. This is his ninth appearance. Sixth in relief. He's thrown a complete game as, uh, in his three starts. Also got a couple saves. 23 and a third innings for the left-hander. He's allowed 12 hits, five earned runs. Walking 16 well, striking out 24. His job to throw up a zero here in the seventh. Yeah. Hope his teammates can rally and make a winner of him. James Georgicus, the leadoff hitter in the seventh inning for Ellsworth. And nearly offered at that one. Let's see if he did. They'll check it. Nope. Take it for ball two. Ellsworth's bullpen is active. Yep. Brady Schroeder is throwing. You're speculating we'd see Brady tomorrow as a starter. Great pitch. Oh, Dreesen gets his night off to a good start by striking out Georgicus. And locked him up. Oh. Again, that's a pitch that Georgicus and Ellsworth would love to get when they're out in the field. Matter. Trying to check up, but good. Strike one. Swinging strike that time, 0 and 2. Left hander looks pretty good. Yeah. Coming in, throwing strikes. Going right after guys. Gets the sign and goes. And Tried to get Matter to bite on the high fastball, but it didn't. That's one and two. Oh. 
Strike three. Have to throw down to first to Caprellian, to Heffel. Two batters, two strikeouts for Colin Dreesen. It's 11 strikeouts for Angel pitching tonight. Here's Flynn. He struck out all three of his plate appearances tonight. Yeah, I don't think he was unhappy to see Heffel leave the game. Yeah. Or at least go play for his base. Well, let's see what he can do against Dreesen. Well, 2-0. Five runs, seven hits, two errors, Ellsworth. One run, four hits, five big errors for St. Catherine. 2-0. All three, that one missed low. And that's ball four, so Flynn works the walk. Yeah, just needed a change in scenery, huh? New pitcher, walked him. Oh, Dan Geezy, designated hitter. He's been a pesky hitter tonight, couple of walks. I don't know if he'll want to see the left-hander out there, though. Yeah. There goes the runner, and they pick him off. But he's going to get to second. Wow. Boy, is he fast. Chandler Flynn. They threw behind him. <laughs> Steve Block, I think, was happy with that. <laughs> Seemed like he was half yelling, half clapping. Third stolen base of the year for Flynn. Wow. He went on first movement. Yeah. Ortiz would be behind him. And By that time, he was gone. Yeah, he was halfway to second, and Apple's throw was late this the short. Just outside. 2-0 to Dan Giese. Brandon Volker, the catcher, hoping to get a chance to hit here in the seventh. He's on deck. 2-0. There's a strike. Dreesen in relief of Derek Heffel, who went the first six for St. Catherine. A little Fernando turn there, it looked like. Fernando looked up more, but uh, or maybe it was a more Louis Louis Tion move, I guess. He spins around and looks out. Chop to the left side. Nice pickup by Idle. Long throw and a nice stretch by Heffel. Got him. So Giese's out by a step, and St. Catharines escapes the seventh without any further damage. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Last chance for Racine St. Catharines. They're down four to Ellsworth. We're heading to the bottom of the seventh. Machine St. Catharines needs four to tie. Five would win it. James Georgicus back on the mound for Ellsworth, looking for the complete game win in the state semifinals. 
Here's Eric Idol, the third baseman, leading off. And the first pitch from Georgicus is a ball, 1-0. Oh. We've seen St. Catharines, number one team in Division Two. They haven't lost since April 12th. Imagine that. that was 21 games ago. We saw the number one team in Division Four bumped off earlier today. Greenwood fell. In fact, they were unbeaten. That's a ball high, 3 0. They overthrew that one. And how many times have we said it? But the last three outs of the game were the toughest ones to get. Doesn't matter if you're talking high school or college or minor league or big league. Strike. Three and one. I had a chance to talk to Michael Flood for Johnson Creek after they knocked off Greenwood. He said the ball four. So leadoff man on, Idle draws the walk. And uh, he said, someone asked me before the game, how are you going to handle playing the number one ranked team in the state? They're undefeated. Michael Flood looked at him and said, they haven't played us. And sure enough, they're no longer undefeated. So you have to have confidence. You have to believe that you can do it. I mean, Ellsworth has played with confidence tonight. That's yeah, the pitching have. coach out there talking to Chirkakis. And he's undoubtedly saying, let's throw strikes. Yeah. You got good stuff. You proved it all night. You got eight guys behind you that want to help. Yeah, he's staying in the game. Yeah, no walk guys. A, walk got a courtesy runner out there. For St. Katz, Brandon Wedge is running for idle. There he is. Brandon is a junior for the Angels. So the leash is getting a bit shorter for Georgicus. Well, Georgicus has walked three. They've all come since the fourth inning. Yeah. What do you think? One more guy on and they make a move? Or? A little more rope than that. Swinging strike for Nick Davidovic, the designated hitter for Racine St. Catherine. Well, I, I don't at this point. I'm sure he doesn't want to burn an inning. Yeah. If you bring Schroeder in, that means he can only pitch six innings tomorrow, and you have to go somewhere else to get a guy to pitch the seventh inning. Popped up. Let's see if there's room for the first baseman. Not quite. Uh, the railings got in the way there. Wade LeBecki, our tournament director, right there on the left side of your screen. Hey, what? He's a happy guy with the weather this this week. Smooth sailing for this tournament. It's gone late a couple of nights, but no delays because of weather. Yet, where's the wood? They can't find wood anymore. You know, everything's plastic or something. I wish you. Uh... Swinging strike three. First base occupied, so Davidovic is out. Second time he's struck out tonight. And now Ellsworth is just two outs away. Brady twice this way. Don't move twice this way. There you go. Nine strikeouts for the left hander. Top of the order, Nathan Simons. Swinging strike, Volker keeps it in front of him and no advance by the runner Wedge at first. And that annoying sound you hear. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd Mike is a fellow holding the D in the defense side, banging it out of the pipe adjacent to the Ellsworth dugout. Chopper to the mound. This is going to be a tough play. It's going to stay fair and safe at first. Well, there I think Sir Cockus made an error in judgment. If he lets that one roll, I think it goes foul. As it was, he's going to have to make a great play to throw out the speedy Simon. So it'll be an infield hit. So two on. You can see, I think this one's got enough spin. It's going to roll foul if he lets it roll. Yeah. He's thinking of an out. Well, We're going to take a great play to get there's him. There's no way he's going to get him, I yeah. don't think. So, yeah, so you let that one roll, and if it dies fair, it dies fair. But now it's getting a little interesting. One out, first and second. For Luke Cunnington in the heart of the order coming up, ball one. That's the tying run in the on deck circle. And if you're an Angels fan, you just want to get that tying run to the plate. 
Seen St. Catherine with only one run on four hits, but posing a threat here in the seventh. There's a important strike for Georgicus. One and one. There's A.J. Caprelli on the on-deck hitter. He's over three tonight. The guy at the plate's over three tonight. Well, maybe they're due. Popped it up. Foul. So, Connaughton falls behind one and two. And George Kakis, again, has gone back to what's been successful for him. Getting ahead of hitters. Big pitch coming, the one, two with one out. Late swing, back to the mound, and through the mound, it gets to the second baseman, Flynn, got him at first. Oh, boy. Well, if Georgicus picks it up, it might be a double play, but it went right between his legs. I thought it might have been even fortuitous it went between his legs. Well, if, if it had gone out the second, I thought he tags the bag, and we might have gone home. But you're right, he's got to field that ball. He didn't. It went through. He didn't have enough juice, I guess, to get out yeah. to second base. Yep. Flynn gets the sure out, and that's a good play. So two out. The runners at second and third are meaningless. The guy at the plate is the fella that the left-hander's got to be cognizant of getting. So Connaughton makes it to second. So it's second and third with two out. Well, Seth Simons at second, and he can oh, excuse run. Excuse me, Simons at second. That's right. He, uh... The courtesy runners at third. Ooh, called a strike. And boy, he's had A.J. Caprillion's number all night. Yeah. He's just tied him up with that off-speed breaking pitch. And you know A.J. is up there thinking, throw me a fastball, <laughs> please. Nope. Just outside. He's just going to let him see it outside the zone. I don't know he's going to see a lot of fastballs. Uh, no. <laughs> it's A.J.'s job to get on and prolong the game. There's fastball. Ooh, outside. Yeah, but he, hey, he wanted him to chase. Yeah. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy. Oh, boy, this is getting pretty interesting. Chase Smith on deck. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. 3-1 coming to Caprellian. Fouled it off. He challenged him there. Had to down 3-1 on the count. But you got to believe in yourself. And he's one pitch away from getting his team into the state finals. 3-2, and two, two out. Everybody on their feet for Ellsworth. One pitch away from a berth in the state championship. Here it comes. Fouled off. Caprellian battling. Took something off that one <laughs> again. That is a nervous smile from Georgia because Caprillion has struck out twice, one swinging, one's looking. He grounded the second to end the fifth. Time called. Dramatic well, pause. For yeah, <laughs> that's a nice move. Another payoff pitch due for Caprillion. This one's bounced to short. Bedhauser throwing. Got him. Ellsworth goes to the state championship game in their first trip to the state tournament. And they do it behind a little left-hander who threw strikes, showed everybody what it means to be a pitcher, not a thrower. That's James Jorakakis. He allows one run and five hits. And Again, it's real tough to figure out what Ellsworth has done. They've given up three runs in their last four games of tournament play. Jorakakis throws a five-hitter tonight. Ellsworth gets three to break a tie in the fifth and in their first tournament appearance ever. They go on to win 5-1 against the number one team in the state. Upset alert. We're seeing yeah. St. Cats. Number one loses for the first time since April 12th. It's Ellsworth against Portage. Portage ranked 10th. Ellsworth unranked, playing for the D2 title tomorrow. Sure. What do those bolsters know? <laughs> Not nearly as much as they did last week. Well, 12.26 on the clock, and it's time to go home already. Yeah, let's talk about Championship Thursday since we're right. there. 
We're back here at 9 tomorrow morning. Jail have Coleman and Johnson Creek, or Johnson Creek, as I've been told. That's the D4 title game. At D3 at noon, it's Parkview against Prescott. At 3, Portage plays Ellsworth for the Division II title. And then at 6, it's Sun Prairie and Bayport. The Division I teams play to wrap up championship Thursday. We got something for you in that Johnson Creek game. We're going to show you what a pog is. I can hardly wait. Half pig, half dog. The Johnson Creek lucky mascot. And I think it's only eight and a half hours away. <laughs> we aren't going to get any sleep tonight. We're going to be so excited. Final score, Ellsworth. Five, Racine St. Catharines one. So it's Ellsworth and Portage tomorrow, 3 p.m. for the Division II State Championship. We want to thank you all for joining us all day long on FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Hope to see you again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock when we begin with Division IV championship action. Till then, for our entire Run Weary Young Productions crew, along with Bill Brophy, I'm Jay Wilson. Thanks for joining us for WIA State Tournament Baseball on FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Good night. Nice job.